Hello, and this is Burke Lyle here, and welcome to Atlanta and around the Majors baseball show. So game one of the World Series is tonight, and we'll bring you a preview of the World Series between the Phillies and the Astros. And it's hard to believe both of these teams have been around. The Phillies going back to the 1880s, the Astros going back to the 1960s, so the Phillies going around, being around way longer. But they'll be meeting in the World Series for the first time, and granted, the Astros have only been in the National League for uh, 10 years now, or the American League for 10 years, while the Phillies, this is their first playoff appearance since 2011, the last time they made the playoffs, the Astros were in the National League. But they're facing off in the World Series uh, this year in two different teams. Houston won 106 games, ran away with the AL West, and the AL West was over for weeks if not months, while the Phillies, last team into the playoffs. And it's interesting, I read an article on MLB.com where the Phillies, if they were two rule changes helped them one, there's the extra wild card this year. If this was last year, the Phillies would have missed the playoffs. Also, having the DH in the National League really gave Bryce Harper playing time. His season could have been long over, but here he is now, healthy, or not healthy, but playing through that elbow injury and playing in the World Series for the first time in his career. I mean, there's a fair amount of uh, storylines to go through. I mean, Dusty Baker managing the World Series back-to-back -back years has been managing for 30 years now, almost 30 years, you know, a few years off here and there. The Giants lost in the 2002 World Series, the Cubs 2003. Lost to the Marlins in the League Championship Series. Went to the Reds. Had success there, but lost in the postseason each time. And then the Nationals actually managed Bryce Harper in Washington. Now is managing against them in this World Series. And for Baker losing the World Series last year, trying to win that World Series. And Houston trying to win another World Series, one in 2017, when they beat the Dodgers. On the other hand, Bryce Harper playing in his first fall classic. He's waited 11 years for this. Came up in 2012 as a 19-year-old. Had a lot of success with the Nationals. The Nationals went to the playoffs four times in his time in Washington, yet they lost in the first round. Each time, I think they lost game five, three of those times. In fact, he goes to the Phillies, and then the next year, first year in Philadelphia, the Nationals won the World Series without him. And playing in the playoffs for the first time with the Phillies. Also playing in the World Series. And for the Phillies, this is their first time back here since 09. A very different team. If I had to compare the two teams, I kind of did in my head a couple days ago. I would say that the uh, Phillies back then are better than they are now. Since again, those Phillies teams, some of those teams, won games in the 90s every year. And were, I guess, expected to go to the World Series. This Phillies team was different. And I just want to go through each team's run and kind of ha and kind of the trends of the playoffs. So going back about three weeks, it was Phillies Cardinals, and they were down two to nothing in that game one. Yet they found a way to win. Segura got that go ahead hit, putting the ball in play. They won the next game, two to nothing. Aaron Nola really good. Alvarado Dominguez, Bryce Harper, and Eflin the rest of the way. Bryce Harper at that home run. And then they play the 101 Braves, the defending World Series champions. And they win game one after taking a 7-1 lead. Again, those two out singles in that first inning. Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos. They lose game two. Wheeler pitched well into the sixth inning and gave up those singles. And then game three, that was really the turning point of the whole series. Spencer Strider trying to come back from injury. Uh, Hoskins hit kind of a flat fastball for a home run. He was, at the time, really struggling in the playoffs. I think he was 1 for 18 at the time. Bryce Harper had a home run in the third inning as well. Aaron Nola pitched a good game. And then Marsh hits that inside. It's a home run. Real Muto inside the park home run. Harper homers again. They really take care of the uh, Phillies or of the Braves in that series. And when you think about it, uh, what they were what they were doing, you know, it's funny. I'm watching MLB Network on the background. They're showing Bryce Harper, uh, Nationals, and uh, Phillies highlights. But just uh, looking uh, back at it, I might as well turn the TV off. It's a little bit 
uh, distracting. So anyways, just looking back at uh, Phillies being a Braves team that was way better than them and the Braves defending World Series champions, a Braves team that won 100 games the previous season. So then they find a way to beat the Padres. They beat them in five. Game one, Oppositeville home run. Harper barely got it out. Schwarber had almost a 500-foot shot. Zach Wheeler was really good in that game. They lose game two, and that's when Nola was in the middle innings. They had a 4 nothing lead, yet they lost that game, which, by the way, this brings to the point of a postseason concern. Does this carry over? Aaron Nola will be pitching game one tonight. Does this carry over? Can, and, and do the Astros find a way to get to Nola? Well, the last time he pitched against Houston was actually over three weeks ago. Actually, the night the, Phil, uh, the Phillies clinched a spot in the playoffs, and Nola was dominant for about seven innings, almost seven innings. And that's a good history against Houston. Now, granted, struggled against the Padres. So which side of Nola do you get the Nola that we got, say, against Houston in the first two sides of the playoffs? Or do you get the Aaron Nola... That, that we saw last week. And if you get there, Nola, that we saw last week, Houston takes a one uh lead as well. So that's a question you need to ask. And, and granted, despite the names Nola and Verlander, both of them have had some rough starts this playoffs. This game could be higher scoring than you might think. I think that's a possibility tonight. Game three, uh, Phillies-Padres a week ago, Ranger Suarez, five effective innings, Eflin, Alvarado, Dominguez get the final 12 outs, six from Sir Anthony Dominguez. So that's so the, the trend that we've been seeing uh, throughout this uh, playoffs is, again, sometimes Nolan Wheeler can give you six, seven innings. And then the rest of the way, is it Alvarado? Is it Dominguez? Also, Zach Eflin, who has been a starter for much of his career now, whether he moves back in the rotation or not next year, that's another question, wasn't, I think what it was is just did not have enough strength to be a starter here in this in this playoff. So that's who you might be relying on uh, to pitch for you to get those outs as well that aren't from starters, especially say after a game two. So game four, they win ten to six, go up three one. I think Bailey Falter started that game. It was not on this. It was not on the World Series roster. And that's, and that's a question for the Phillies. Who starts a game four? From what we're reading about and going through the trends, you wonder who would be their game four starter. You might rely on Noah Syndergaard, who really hasn't pitched that deep. And again, that game where they beat the Phillies, or when they beat the Braves uh, two weeks ago in that game four, they did not really have a true starter. It was more of a bullpen game. And you wonder if that's going to be the same thing uh, here in game four, where Houston will have, say, a Christian Javier, or Lance McCullers, one or the other. So that's advantage Houston. So here's the thing. Verlander and Valdez, Wheeler, Nola. I would still say slightly advantage Houston. I mean, it's close. If you want guys to win for you as starting pitchers, those are your two guys. So Philly needs to win at least one of these games in order to stay in the series. Because if they don't, I feel like it could potentially be a sweep. I feel like it could be a sweep, and, and I just say that based off starting pitching. Now, now, granted, things could change. I wouldn't be shocked if the Phillies found a way to win. We're up to not to. Oh, I think these first two games could go either way. Since you have two great starting pitchers, can they find a way to out uh, duel each other? So that's what happened there. So game four again, neither starter got out of that first inning. Padres up four to nothing, six to four. Reese Hoskins two home runs. By the way, Reese Hoskins hitting home runs. Throughout that series, Hoskins really becoming, really stepping up big. I think he's had five home runs this October. Bryce Harper at that go-ahead double. And then game five, uh, they win four to three. Bryce Harper at that go-ahead home run. Zach Wheeler also uh, pitched well for them as well. So Harper in that go-ahead home run, and again, swing of his life. And you think about Bryce Harper throughout his career, winning two MVPs, becoming one of the most hyped baseball players coming in the league ever, coming in the league at 19 in Washington, and then hitting that uh, go-ahead home run to send the Phillies to increase their odds of going to the World Series, that go-ahead home run in the eighth inning. And Ranger Suarez, by the way, one day's rest, two pitches, two outs, with runners on second and third, and it was a nerve-wracking series. Well, yes, they won the series 4-1. to one. Game 1 was close. 
Game three was fairly close. Game four, they were trailing. They found a way to win. They could have lost that game. Also could have lost game five as well. But the Phillies, at the end of the day, they won that series. So now let's talk about the Astros' journey. Uh, so for Houston, that Mariners series, by the way, that series could have gone either way. Game one, you're one out away, one strike away from winning. You're on Alvarez, one out away. It's a walk-off home run. It was uh, Robbie Ray pitching. They were down 7-3 to three before Bregman at that two-run home run. That's a game the Mariners should have won. Game two, find a way to beat Castillo. Valdez pitches well enough. Bullpen does a great job. You weren't on Alvarez. Go ahead to a home run in the sixth inning. 3-2 lead. That changes everything. And then, by the way, game three wasn't until Jeremy Payne hit that go-ahead home run in the 18th inning, by the way. And Luis Garcia got the last 15 outs, which, by the way, talking about Luis Garcia, the Phillies desperately need someone like a Luis Garcia, like a Jose Urquidy. One of those two guys would easily be pitching for the Phillies right now and would certainly be a reliable four-starter for them uh, right now. Well, guess what? Garcia, I don't think I've seen him pitch any or very little. I don't think any since then. So, by the way, that that's just, that's just the Astros having their extra uh, starters. So, by the way, Payne hits that go-at-home run. So, again, they find a, they beat Seattle, which, again, the Mariners could have gotten a couple extra hits in that game for Mariners scores in. They win that game. Finish game one. That series could have gone either way. That series could have gone five games. The Mariners actually could have very well won that series. That was a very uh, close series, by the way. Uh, then they beat the Yankees in four. So, again, Verlander strikes out 11 in six innings. But Verlander struggled in game one. And he did give up that home run to Bader. at threw 65 pitches through three innings. Yankees had a chance to capitalize. And they couldn't do it. So the question is, can the Phillies make them work? And can they give them challenging innings? If they can, this is a game that the Phillies can win tonight, but that's what they need to look for, moments like that. Game two, they win 3-2. to two. Valdez has been a trend throughout the playoffs. Seven innings, nine strikeouts, zero earned runs. Bregman threw on home run. Really made that difference for them. Tucker catch at the wall in the eighth, which is just a few feet away. Game one or two, the Yankees could have won, potentially. Game three... Javier was great, allowed just one hit, again, three walks. Now, Grant, if he has three walks against the Philly lineup, does that turn into more runs? That's something to walk, watch out for. Can he keep the walks down? And the question is, can Javier give you six good innings in, say, a game four? And that's the advantage that Houston has. Ranger Suarez struggled, had a labor against the Braves. And then, yes, pitched well against the Padres, but is not the type of starter that... I guess you expect to go deep. I mean, I don't know. His pitch counts were fairly similar in those two games. One was efficient, the other one not. Uh, so the question is, Houston, I'd take Lance McCullers over Suarez, and I'd definitely take Christian Javier over, say, a Noah Syndergaard or whoever the Phillies will run out for in that game four. That's when Houston That's when Houston really has more of an advantage, and they do have a better bullpen. Their bullpen is a lot deeper than, than the uh, Phillies bullpen them again. Dominguez and Alvarado, those are the guys you trust. Eflin, I don't know how much you trust him. And then the rest of the bullpen, you, you don't quite know what you're going to get. So that's what you have there. And Houston took advantage of that error in Game 3. Game 4, they rallied. I mean, I talked at length about that game on Monday, about what happened. Is Jeremy Pena, go-ahead, 3 run home run, ALCS MVP. Alvarez tied the game in the seventh of the single. Bregman, the go-ahead hit. So Bregman coming up big. So again... That, that's what Houston can do, find, finding ways to win games. I mean, there's, there's certain games that Houston could have lost. They could have lost all three games to the Mariners. They could have lost game one, could have lost game two, could have lost game four, but they found a way uh, to win. And they were able to find a way to sweep the series. Now, could have the Yankees won a game or two in that series, and could have, could have, this, could have that series gone five or six? Sure, it could have. Just like that Mariners series could have gone four or five either way type series. But that Yankee the, that Yankee series, the Astros deserved to win. They were clearly the better team. Uh, no question about it. They won four games. Yankees couldn't win one of those games. Uh, Phillies, yes, they won in five as well. And both of these teams found ways to win games that they could have lost. Down 4 nothing, could have lost that game. Down 6-4, to four, could have lost that game. But they found a way... Uh, to win. And by the way, Houston is undefeated this postseason, which very well uh, couldn't be. 
seven and zero. Philly lost two games. They lost game two to the Braves, and then they lost game two to the Padres before winning the last three in Philadelphia. And again, that Bryce Harper home run, finding a way to win the game. Against St. Louis, game one, finding a way to win that game, a game that they could have lost as well. And yes, come from behind wins. That That is what has happened to the Phillies. And then just, just completely taking advantage of the Braves. In fact, you think about games three and four against Atlanta, no way the Braves should have won either one of those games. Those the Phillies all the way in that series, certainly in those uh, games. And then Houston, again, Seattle, finding a way to win those games and games that they could have lost. And then New York, again, judges the ball a little bit further. Game two might be a different story. Yet they find a way to win. Bregman home run, making the difference. And then game three in New York, should have won that. But game four, think about... Altuve barely getting infield single, and then Jeremy Pena hitting a ground ball that, that, that turns into an error. Houston just takes it takes all takes all the advantage in the world over a play like that, and that shows why they're the better team. So this series, Verlander Nola, going back to that. So Nola, he, your concern is do you, do, do you repeat what he sees against San Diego? But then again, I feel like we'll correct that, and I feel like we'll be like he was against Houston in the end of the regular season and also against the Braves and the Cardinals. I think we see that version of Nola. Verlander's had some rough innings this playoffs. What if we get Verlander like he was against Seattle? Then this is a game that the Phillies could win. So the Phillies could win game one, game two. Wheeler could be great. Maybe find a way to get to Valdez. Even, even if Valdez is great, that could be a classic pitcher. Still. Philly, I think, can win game one or game two. Game three... Suarez, I don't know how much I trust Suarez. And then by that point, yes, the bullpen is well rested, but you have a McCullers. This is a game that the Astros could win. Game four, I think, has to go to the Astros. Javier on paper starting pitching. And then your bullpen against the Phillies bullpen, uh, seeing them again. I think that would go to Houston game five, rematch. Maybe Verlander is great in those two starts. Maybe he really is. Maybe they have a 3-2 lead. I think they do have a 3-2 lead going into a potential game six. And then it's back to Wheeler and then a, a Suarez while Houston would have McCullers in a game. So th those are just scenarios to watch out for. But after looking uh, through this and all these scenarios, I'm going to say that I think game one, I think the Phillies win one of the first two in Houston. And then I think the Astros win at least two out of three maybe even all three in Philadelphia. And then going back for six or seven, look, I'm going to say Houston wins the World Series. I think they win in five or six. Since you can look at, so by the way, let's take a look at the uh, stats from the last series to see which offense is doing better. So who was used, by the way, for the Astros? So Jeremy Pena, CS MVP. Can he keep this up? He's had big hits all postseason long. Can he hit two home runs, four RBIs? Can he continue what he's doing? Can Altuve start to get it going in the World Series? It was kind of cold this postseason. Does he finally get hot and hit a few home runs and get closer to catching Manny Ramirez? Um, can't for the all-time postseason lead in home runs. Can Alex Bregman continue to stay hot, get big hits, hit, hit a few home runs in this series? Can Gurriel continue? Can Jordan Alvarez pick up to what he was against Seattle? Kind of struggling a little bit against the Yankees. Not quite the same. Kyle Tucker was 2 uh, for 13. Does Tucker improve at all in this series? And then when you look at uh, the pitching leaders, so Valdez, Verlander, Javier McCullers, all starters pitched at least five innings. And then you have Presley. Uh, the closer, he's had a good postseason so far. Brian Abreu almost gave up that home run to Judge. Might Would have been a different story. His line would look different. And then you have Neris. Just a really a good bullpen depth for this team. So this team between four starters has used one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, six different relievers. So they've used a total of 10 pitchers in that series against the Yankees. Most trusted relievers, Ryan Presley, Brian Abreu, Hector Neris. They all pitched three times. Rafael Montero pitched three times as well. A little bit of a rough outing in one of his uh, starts. So you had... They pitched three out of the four games. Now we look at the NLCS to figure out what the stats are. So Harper was series MVP. 
when he hit two home runs, five RBIs, hit 400 in that series, three doubles. So again, five extra base hits. Castellanos, mm, rough series. Hoskins hit four home runs in that series, seven RBIs. Bohm, three for 17, better version of him. Real Muto, four for 17. Segura, two for 17 after being so good earlier. Schwarber really picked it up, three home runs, four RBIs. Can he continue the power surge? Struggled early on in the playoffs. It started to get going in more recent series as well. And then finally, we want to look at the Phillies uh, pitching. So in terms of innings pitch, so you had Wheeler, 13 innings pitched in that series. Wheeler was quite good. Can Wheeler pick it up again in a ga big game two tomorrow, potentially trying to even the series or giving the Phillies a two to nothing lead? You could also be seeing him in a potential game six as well. Ranger Suarez pitching as well in a game three, giving five effective innings, pitch almost into the six. Nola, rough start, six run, earned runs allowed against the Padres. Again, we've talked about this before. Do we see this version of Nola or do we see the other versions? And by the way, Sir Anthony Dominguez, so now you uh, go on to talk about relievers. And yeah, by the way, barely falter, couldn't really give them anything. Brad Hand had a rough inning. Noah Syndergaard, does Syndergaard actually start a game and give them a reason of length? So three game, use Sir Anthony Dominguez three games, gave them four innings, including two innings in that game three win. Connor Brogdon, two games, three innings pitched. Alvarado, three games, three innings. Robertson appeared three times. Couldn't quite close out that game beforehand. So that's who you'd be uh, looking at. So how many relievers could you see a lot? Dominguez, Alvarado, Eflin, I guess Robertson. And then I guess you could see Connor Brogdon. So a certain amount of relievers as well. How many are trusted? So again, when just in terms of advantage, everything. Astros, I think, are the better hitting team overall. It's close. They're both good offenses. Pitching, starting, Houston. Games three and four are the biggest different marks. Certainly game four. And then uh, game... And then relief, I feel like the Astros just have a better overall bullpen. I think they've pitched better this series, and the Astros have yet to lose a postseason game. Can the Astros be undefeated and really just win all four games? I think it's possible they could win in four. I think it's more likely to be five or six. And granted, Philadelphia's a good team, too. They could win games one and two, and then all of a sudden, there's a lot of pressure in Philadelphia. Since, remember, Houston went down... 0-2 uh, to the Nationals in 2019. And yeah, they won all three games in Washington, but they couldn't finish that series with Verlander, with Grinky. For some reason, the Nationals found ways to win games, like Houston found some ways as playoffs in games where they're trailing, like the Phillies did in some games where they're trailing this playoffs. That's how you win a championship, is games that you could have well lost or would normally typically lose. You find a way to win uh, those games. So yes, Philly could win two games, Extra pressure on Houston, potentially. I could see a scenario, even if Houston does win two out of three in Philadelphia, where the Phillies are in position to win the series back in Houston. I mean, again, the Phillies have a shot to win the series. They do. And they've won 87 games. Houston's 106. Houston's favored. And then the day, I'm going to go with the Astros. I picked the Astros earlier. I'm going to pick them a, a few minutes. I'm going to pick them again to win. And I'm not quite sure whether I want to say five or six. They're going to win the series. I guess I'll lean closer to six. Uh, but yeah, I think but yeah, I think the Astros in the day are World Series champions. And that would be their second championship in six years. So yeah, Astros are World Series champions. So that's everything for now on Atlanta and around the Majors Baseball Show. Uh, we will talk more uh, hopefully during the series, do some series videos, maybe even some post-game uh, recaps along the way. But it's going to be a good series. This is it. Final stretch of baseball in a couple weeks. There'll be no baseball. Thank you for listening.